For the last two years, I've been secretly building the most scientific gym on the planet. It's, it's really a blank slate, bro. This ceiling light is gonna look so sick. I think it's really unique. I think it gives a like industrial, like techie type vibe. This is where I'll be training myself, but it's not just for lifting. It's actually a full blown muscle research facility. So that now, in here, I'll be able to do my own scientific experiments. I'm calling the entire place the Jeff Nippard Muscle Lab. And there are four rooms plus a lobby in the middle. There's a dark gym with more of the bodybuilding machines, a light gym with more of the strength stuff. Room three is a new podcast room. And then there's my personal favorite room. This is where all the real science will go down. And what's behind that door cost me over $300,000. And since it's the best part by far, I'm gonna save it for last. So this is the lobby. We've got this custom art piece up here on the wall. We got the custom JN logo mat down here. And behind this door is the dark side. Behind this door is the light side. Let's check out the light side first. Before we go in, this is what it used to look like before. This is gym, gym side one. So this is gonna be more of like a light toned gym. So it'll be a little bit brighter, a little more white. And this is what it looks like now. Before we start the tour, I just wanna make it clear that nothing in here was gifted or sponsored. I just picked out my favorite pieces from brands like Alico, Atlantis, Prime, even an old school pre-core machine. So the first thing you see when you walk in is the deadlift platform. And now that I have this gym, I have been getting back into deadlifting more, but my main exercise for my legs right now is right over here around the corner. The pendulum squat. Um, so if you guys have been watching me at all, you know that I'm a huge fan of pendulum squats and it's a really good quad dominant squat because it is super hard in that bottom part of the range of motion. I have been using this flat out. And also, check this out. I got my very own Jeff Nippard Muscle Lab plates. They're not all in yet, but uh, I don't know. I just love the look of these. Speaking of the quads, this is a very, very close second. So this is a prime leg extension machine. And the thing I love about this one is that depending on where you load these plates, you can emphasize different aspects of the range of motion. So if I load the plate down here, okay, on the bottom, it's gonna feel really hard in the squeeze. So it's gonna get harder as you get to the lockout. If you load it in the middle, it's gonna feel harder in the middle. And then if you load it on the top, it's gonna feel hardest in the stretch. So when I do this, I normally load two plates on top, two plates in the middle, and that'll usually do me for around 10 reps. And not only that, this is the only machine, the only leg extension machine that I've seen that has this deep of a knee angle. So you can get way deeper here than you can on any other leg extension I've ever seen, especially if you set the seat back. This is hip abduction, hip adduction machines. I actually had Jesse James West in here yesterday and I was telling him that you can set the seat forward if you wanna get a little bit more of a stretch. You can set the seat back if you wanna improve the angle of the glute medius fibers a little bit better. It's also super versatile. So if you set it in here, you can do your hip abductions for the glutes. If you set it out here, you can do your hip adductions for the inner thighs. All right, hamstrings. This is by far my favorite lying leg curl machine on the planet. And the reason for that is this angle right here. This is pretty much the closest to a seated leg curl that you can get in a lying leg curl. So it's like, oh, why didn't you just get a seated leg curl? Well, I did get a seated leg curl too, but there's something about lying down, honestly, at the start of a workout that just feels better to me. And you get so deep on this that it almost feels like your leg is gonna snap in half. And I mean that in the best possible way. <laughs> It is just, it is just an awesome machine. And like with all Prime machines, depending on where you set the cam, you can overload different aspects of the range of motion. I usually set it here, in between the max stretch setting and the mid range setting. All right, leg press. So this is actually a fancy leg press. So most leg presses are just linear. So you have this 45 degree angle and the weight moves up and down in a straight line. This one actually moves in an arc. It just feels a lot more natural and uh, I can get nice and deep on this one. Super smooth machine. Oh, I forgot to show you. This is one of my favorite pieces. 
Donkey Caffrey's. This, I think, is an underrated machine. It is a nostalgia piece. This is famous in part because of uh, Arnold and his donkey calf raises. But I was showing Jesse a few calf tips on this yesterday. When you have that bent hip position, you can take some of the stress off your back, but yet you still have a straight leg. And so you can still get a super big stretch on the gastrocnemius. So yeah, absolutely love the donkey calf. And then just to be safe, you know, to be sure, I do also have a, a standing calf raise machine. And this one's really nice because this pad is so grippy, and so you can just rotate up and down on the balls of your feet, and you'll be super secure, super stable, and just direct all that tension into your calves. I was actually talking to Larry Wheels earlier, and we're gonna get him in the actual lab, that I'll show you in a minute, and do a full-blown calf training study to see if we can finally get his stubborn calves to grow using science. Speaking of Larry Wheels, we've got a full squat rack over here. As a uh, ex-power lifter, you know, I've gotta, gotta have some free weights. But this, this is probably my number one glute builder right now. I do like a one second squeeze at the top of each rep because the hip thrust is one of those rare exercises where you're not really trying to overload the stretch. You're really just trying to engage your glutes. And so uh, yeah, squeeze at the top of all your hip thrusts. All right, obviously gotta have a Smith machine in here. And with a Smith machine, I'm really just looking for two things. One is a straight up and down bar path. So I personally am not a fan of the Smith machines that have a angled bar path. So I wanted one that goes straight up and down. And then other than that, I just wanted one that was really smooth. There's nothing worse than a Smith machine that needs some oil. And I've been using this one pretty much every workout too. You guys thought that was it? That's just half. We still got the dark side. So come on over here. You guys ready for the dark side? Let's go. All right, so like I said, this is the more bodybuilding focused side. So we've got a little more dramatic down lighting. I'm gonna show you guys something really sick with the lights in a minute. But first, I'm gonna start with my favorite piece over here. So this, if you don't know, is a seal row. This is one of those like old school movements, but I just think it's so good for smashing the mid back. So if you use this horizontal angle, you can get so much tension in your mid traps and your rhomboids and your rear delts. But then what I love about this machine in particular, is you can actually change this angle. So if I wanted to make it more of a lat focused row, I could just bring the bench up and focus on driving my elbows down and slightly back. And that's gonna absolutely light up my lats. Also check it out. We've got custom dumbbells with Jeff Nippard Muscle Lab on them. I just love these. A very, very close runner up for back training in this gym would be the prime chest supported row. And so just like with the leg extension, depending on where you load the plates, you can overload different aspects of the range of motion. Um, so if you load the plates on the bottom, you can overload the squeeze, load them in the middle, load that mid part of the range, load them up on top, and you'll get more tension in the stretch. Absolutely love this one. Over here, we've got another uh, T-bar row. I'm still trying to find a home for this one, but um, I don't know, there's something about like the angle and the size of this, the way that the handles flare out, it just works super well for my body. Right here, so most people think this is a lower back exercise, right? After all, it is called a uh, 45 degree lower back extension, but I actually think this is much better as a glute exercise. And so all you need to do to turn this into a fantastic glute builder is round your back and that'll force your glutes to handle more of the hip extension. Like I've been doing this every week on one of my leg days and I'll just do 12 to 15 reps with a plate held to my chest and you will feel the craziest mind muscle connection with your glutes doing this. So if you're sleeping on the 45 degree back extension for glute growth, it's time to wake up. Uh, let me show you guys some shoulder stuff. Let's go here first. So this is a shoulder press machine and some of you guys might be wondering, well, Jeff, why did you get a shoulder press machine? Doesn't that only hit your front delts and don't your front delts get all the work they need from bench press? And shouldn't you focus more on your side delts? Well, the other day I busted out one of the many new scientific tools from the research room with my friend Will, where we hooked electrodes up to his front delts, side delts, and rear delts, and measured muscle activation of all three heads on my new shoulder press machine. The results really surprised me. What we found was super high activation in the front delts, as you'd expect, super low activation in the rear delts, as you'd expect, but 
Also super high activation in the side delts. You actually had more lateral than front on that's, the shoulder press. What? That's insane because <laughs> as soon as I stopped the set, I'm like, my side delts pumped. Yeah. Then I hooked the left probes up to myself and got my own measurements and found the exact same thing. So I'm not saying that that's conclusive by any means, but it seems that at least for Will and me, a shoulder press is not just a front delt exercise. It seems to also really activate the side delts at least more than what most people think. So I'm actually a fan of including a vertical press. Also for shoulders, I've got this standing Atlantis lateral raise machine over here. This is one of my favorites. Super smooth, such a great range of motion, and just a really good alternative to cables or dumbbells. Will and I also did a little experiment for the rear delts. So we came over here and we did reverse pec deck. But if you guys are regular viewers, you'll know that I don't love to do these facing the machine like this. I prefer to sit more to the side and that way I can get such a better range of motion for my rear delts. You know, if, if you face the machine, you're really only able to do half reps because the full range of motion for your rear delts is from here all the way back to here. And so if you're facing the machine, you're only getting this aspect. It would be like doing bicep curls only in the top half and completely cutting out the bottom. So that's how I modify this. And when we did that and we measured muscle activation, we did see super high rear delt activation as you'd expect. But also I found it interesting. There was very little side delt activation on this and basically no front delt activation. So yeah, really good rear delt isolation exercise if you're looking to bring up your rear delts. Okay, we've got a lat pull down, pretty standard here, really smooth. Over here, we've got a seated cable row. And what I like about this one is this distance right here, what that allows me to do is get a super deep stretch on my lats. Over here, back to chest. So this is my favorite chest press machine on the planet. I actually call this the Phil Heath machine because I remember when I was first getting into bodybuilding, I saw a video of Phil Heath using this machine. And ever since then, I've just been convinced that it's the best machine <laughs> for the chest. And to make it a little bit more effective, I actually added these fat grips just so I can get a little extra range of motion at the bottom. But what I might do is uh, actually modify this seat to bring it forward a little bit more because I feel like I could get just a little bit deeper. But when it comes to smoothness, oh, you, just, yeah, you just can't beat the hammer strength chest press, man. So good. All right, couple more things. And then I'm gonna show you guys something I'm also super excited about. Okay, over here we've got a treadmill, whatever. This is, I think honestly, it's the best cable machine that I could find. Um, it's called the Nautilus Human Sport Freedom Trainer. And the reason I think it's so good is that it's just so versatile. So you can set the cables to any height you want. You can move them in or out. Um, you can do any kind of exercise from low, from high. Um, and this one I use every single upper body workout. But you know what I didn't show you guys yet? The lighting in here. Check this out. We honestly put so much work into the lighting in here because I just want it to look as cool as possible on camera. And so we have a full panel in here where we can adjust all the lights individually and every single light has its own dimmer. Let's just say we wanted to create a spotlighting effect for just like maximum shadows on the muscle. We could turn off all the headlights and then every single spotlight in here is individually controlled. So I could turn them all off, which except for one. And this is what I'm gonna call the thumbnail lighting. Check this out. I just got 5% body fat leaner. <laughs> it's actually insane the difference that lighting can make, but that's not it. I still need to show you guys the real purpose behind this entire project. Um, this is gonna be the lab, probably like some kind of muscle mannequin right here. And then I think I'm gonna put a sign that says Jeff Nippard Muscle Lab. This room over here is the Jeff Nippard Muscle Lab. There are so many fitness questions I wanna answer here. Like, what if I took a set of twins and I had one twin eat a junk food only diet and the other twin eat a clean food only diet? What would happen to their body fat and their blood work? Or how about this? What if I took an enhanced bodybuilder and told them to stop taking steroids for six months but keep their training and diet exactly the same? How much muscle would they lose? 
I'm also excited to test things out on myself. Right now, I'm testing if I can get to single digits body fat and actually maintain it all year without going crazy. And I'm measuring my body fat, muscle, hormone levels, and everything else using the tools in this lab. This is a top of the line DEXA machine for measuring body fat and lean mass. Some DEXAs are less precise, but this one has an error margin of around 0.5%. At my latest check-in for my fat loss experiment, my DEXA scan came back with a body fat percentage of 10.3%. So if I lose anything more than 0.5% body fat from here, this DEXA will be able to accurately pick it up. And DEXA is great for tracking fat loss, but for the muscle building experiments I wanna do, it's not quite accurate enough. So I also got this brand new ultrasound machine, which can measure muscle thickness directly. I wanna do an arm experiment where I train one bicep normally, twice a week, but I train my other bicep every single day for 30 days. Using the ultrasound, I'll be able to measure down to the millimeter which arm grows better. So if you take this ultrasound probe, gel it up and put it on the muscle, it'll show you exactly what's happening on the inside and how well it's growing over time. So up here on top, there's a layer of skin and there's a thin layer of fat. And all of this is the actual biceps muscle tissue and below that is the bone. We're gonna be able to do really high quality studies that I definitely wanna get peer reviewed and published. This isn't just for experiments on YouTube. I think that there are so many gaps in the research and there are so many studies that have flaws with them that I just wanna make my own. So now I can do that. I have the ultrasound, I have the DEXA machine. I can get however many subjects I can recruit to come in here. Bro, it's gonna be, it's gonna be peer reviewed. It's gonna go in scientific journals. Like it's, it's gonna be like doing a study, but just like this is the university, you know? But if I'm being honest, pushing the scientific field forward wasn't my main motivation for building this facility. My main motivation is to make high quality science more accessible and entertaining. The range of motion study that I did last year in New York, comparing full range of motion to length and partials, was actually the first ever exercise science study where the researchers were allowed to film the subjects. And even with that permission, we still had to blur out their faces. And since I'm not formally affiliated with the university, I still wasn't able to film them myself. So that was a bit frustrating because I felt like I couldn't showcase exactly what the subjects were doing as well as I wanted to. Here, we're gonna be able to film every single subject in every study that I do, show you exactly what they're doing, show you exactly the gains they make. Like, just imagine how much more that's gonna help people connect with the science when you can actually see the subjects going through the protocol. Like, it, that's never been done in exercise science, ever. And we're gonna be able to do that here. I also wanna do some really big studies in here with hundreds of subjects because a legitimate problem with a lot of training studies is that they have really small sample sizes. Like it's normal for studies to only have eight or 10 subjects. So if we get a load of people in here, and we just need to grab a quick and dirty snapshot, we can use this BIA machine. Yeah, I'll definitely use the DEXA more, but BIA can measure body comp in about one minute, whereas DEXA takes about 20 to 30 minutes. And BIA is still pretty good at tracking changes. And I'm super excited about this EMG machine. I wanna run an EMG validation study to see if higher electrical activity is actually predictive of hypertrophy over the long term, because that's not something we really know yet. If it is, this will be really useful for comparing exercises. And at this point, you may be wondering how I'm funding all this. The DEXA machine alone costs $200,000. And it's honestly all possible because of you guys. Nothing in the lab or in the gym is sponsored or gifted. It was 100% funded through the training programs that you guys run on jeffnipper.com and through any of you who use Macrofactor. Which, if you don't know, is my smart nutrition app that uses science-based algorithms to adjust your diet to your specific metabolism, just like a coach would, but for a tiny fraction of the cost. All you need to do is log your weight and track what you eat, and the app will take care of the rest. I've been using it every day on my cut so far, and it's taken me from over 20% body fat down to just over 10% body fat now. And I'll be honest, it's made the entire dieting process super simple. When you track your macros, you can still be flexible and enjoy life without having to compromise your goals. We have over 350,000 users and an amazing online community that can help you out with recipes, answer any questions you might have, and keep you accountable. So go to the App Store or Google Play, download a free trial, and input code JEFF to get two weeks for free. It's been so hard trying to keep this a secret for the last two years because it's been so much work and also so much excitement. And I almost forgot, the final room is the Jeff Nippard Podcast. So 
My podcast is officially live. I did my first episode with my brother, Brad. You guys might remember him from the experiment that we did together where we both trained as perfectly as we possibly could for a full year. I'll put a link to that over here next to my head if you guys wanna check it out. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Leave me a like if you enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys all here in the next one.